So today we're going to talk about the 1956 Z-Man right there. Uh, it was one of the first programmable, electronic programmable toys. And I'll show you some patents and other information to prove that. First let's do a slight demo. It should be figure eights. You don't really have a room big enough for this. Obviously, he's gonna gonna hit something. Yeah, he made it up over. Ooh, the moly! Okay, got time to save the Z-Man. Let's uh, let's go into the other room. So hang on. And I'll show you how the programming worked and all of that good kind of stuff. Hang on, we're almost we're almost set up. Okay. More or less. Can't really pull back any further. Would be nice if I could. So it's up underneath uh, the Z-Man's dome is where the programming takes place. And again, you got to remember, this is 1956. I mean, TVs and radios were all tubes. There weren't printed circuit boards in almost anything at that point. And this toy had a printed circuit board. And all of these levers are how you electronically program it. Uh, when they're all slid to an outer position, that's one of the motors running. When they're slid to the inner position, it would be the other motor running. The toy actually does not have a move straight forward mode. You can only program left and right turns, zigzag, circles, stuff like that. Now this toy is in rather poor shape because originally it would had some spring-loaded missile launchers here. And these are geared to the rear wheels, so as the rear wheel turns, this will spin around and it could activate and launch the spring-loaded missile, for example. And also you can see part of the this piece is broken off here too. Um, so like I say, to move it, you just simply would, I mean to program it, you just simply slide these. Like if I take, I'll leave two up, two down, two up, two down, two up, two down. I'm just going to alternate them here. So then we'd have an alternating zigzag pattern. Now what drives the sequencer is a little wiper. You can see a little wiper in there. That goes around when the car moves because this it's geared off this rear wheel. See this gear and this? So as the car moves, that moves that wiper, which may or may not be showing up in the video, but it uh, moves that wiper around to the different sequences. And like I just explained, whether they're in or out, there's one motor or the other. There's no position, even in the patent I checked, for going forward. The toy was meant to literally go left or right. And I'm trying to put the uh, helmet back up, like so. For example, here... I'll put two links uh, down below to the Alphadrome website where I have all this information I'm showing you right now posted plus I have a patent section on Alphadrome and I have the complete patents showing the wiring and a total description of how the toy uh, was intended to work when it was patented by... actually a patent was granted in 1957 but the toy was for sale in 1956 so the Z-Man the brain but the interesting thing about this one is it's showing different ways of setting those switches we just talked about. Whether you want to do left hand circles or right hand circles. Or whether you want to do a pattern like this or the figure eight like we just did out there. And they explain that it takes a minimum of uh, six switches to do a complete circle. So they explain different ways of uh, doing that kind of stuff. Uh, there's an early ad copy for it. Here's a full color one where you could get it for 11 bucks. That was a lot of money back in uh, 1956, 11 bucks. Um, some of the patent drawings, but I have the full patent with the text and everything, just not on the, in this link right here, 
showing the battery hookup, the motor hookup, all that kind of stuff. Uh, pulled some pictures off the web showing what the bottom would have looked like when it had the cardboard inserts covering two of the areas. Uh, some of the different boxes. Normally, if you bought it from Sears, it would come in a plain brown box. So this would be like if Wards or somebody was selling it, I guess. Here's the Sears box. They always did that with their toys to uh, save money. And here's some uh, different ones. It looks like there must have been some prototypes with a different looking type car and different looking type missiles and stuff. But that would be the Z-Man and like I say that dates back to 1956 as far as anyone knows or as far as I've been able to find out that's the earliest record of a mass-produced programmable toy electronically programmable toy now don't get me wrong uh, mechanically programmable things like music boxes and, and on and on like that uh, using punch cards and discs and all kinds of things have been around for more than a hundred years before this but um, as far as a mass-produced toy that is both mechanical and electrically controlled because you're moving all those switches this is considered to be the first so there you go